God, we thank you that you're such a good, good father. We thank you that, God, you know what your children need. And God, even when we can't see it, even when we can't understand, God, we trust that you are good. God, we thank you for the way that we can see how great you are in the, your, all of your creation. God, as we look around and see uh, the trees, and we see the grass, and we see the birds. God, we see the sun that rises and the moon that rises and sets. And Father, we thank you for the stars and the expanse universe, God, that we can see your great hand at work. Father, thank you. Thank you that we serve such a great and powerful and wonderful God. God, thank you, Lord Jesus, God, that we can gather tonight. God, as I listened to the voices of my brothers and sisters, God, I, I heard the cry of how great that you are. God, I pray, Lord, that you saw our hearts tonight, and I pray that you found us acceptable in your sight through the blood of Christ this evening. Lord, I love you. I ask that you, um, God, that your Holy Spirit would guide us. That he would open our eyes and he would give us a great time of discussion together. Father, I pray that you would uh, help us to grow, uh, God, tonight. That, that's the point. That's the purpose, Father. And so instill in our hearts the things that you would have us to see and understand, bring conviction in our lives. God, may we leave here different than we came in uh, tonight. Lord, I love you. I thank you for all that you're doing. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being here. Good to see you tonight. And I'm glad that, uh, that you have chosen to uh, be here. And uh, the sun's still shining outside, which is a little weird. And uh, <laughs> Allie made the comment on the way out the door, wow, this is weird going to church in this daylight. And uh, so uh, you, can, you can kind of agree with that too, right? Leaving to go to church at night and it's daylight. Uh, it's a really, really neat, neat thing. So uh, anyway, all right, as we continue on in our study of uh, the uh, the fruit of the spirit, uh, we look at session five uh, in the fruit of the spirit tonight. If I can get my iPad to do what it's supposed to do, and uh, Clay, I guess I'm on. You got me on tonight. Am I good? Okay. All right, good deal. That's fine. Um, and so anyway, so uh, we'll look at um, we'll look at two different ones tonight because they're both. I know they're not in the line together and they're not back to back, uh, but um, but they kind of work together tonight. Um, and uh, so uh, tonight we're going to look at gentleness and we're going to look at kindness. Or we're going to look at kindness and we're going to look at gentleness. Whichever way you want to say it, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And uh, then I have, some, uh, I have some handouts for you that, that will give you some homework. How many of y'all like homework? A few of y'all like homework, okay? I, I think that you're going to enjoy this homework. This is going to be fun homework, okay? This ain't like it was in school. I know us guys, some of you ladies too, but us guys, we hate homework. I hated homework at school. I felt like I was there for three days every day, and uh, I felt like we should have been able to do everything we need to do while I was there. But, but uh, So anyway, it's going to be something fun. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it's good uh, what, I, uh, what I give to you when you leave and uh, something that you can do. So anyways, we look at kindness and gentleness. Uh, two different scriptures. Well, I'm going to be in different scriptures tonight. One is going to be in Galatians 5. Uh, so if you want to go to Galatians 5, stick your finger there. And then Ephesians 4 uh, is another place that we will be. Um, and um, uh, there's quite a bit more scriptures. And I didn't give them all to Clay tonight. So I'll read them to you uh, as we go along. So, uh, But we'll be in uh, Ephes uh, Galatians 5, Ephesians 4. Um, and uh, as we as we look at those tonight, kindness and gentleness, two words that uh, that we see uh, is our fruit of the spirit. If you got your Bibles, Galatians five, we'll look at these different fruit of the spirit. Uh, starting in verse number twenty two of Galatians five is but the fruit of the spirit. This is Paul talking to the church of Galatia, um, and uh, probably everyone in here is very familiar with that. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy. Love and joy, peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Of course, Paul followed that up with, against such things there is no law. Uh, we've talked about these over the last four weeks, and we have seen that um, uh, we've talked about love and the agape love and joy and where joy is found. We, we've looked at peace, and we've also looked at patience. 
Uh, those of you that weren't here for patience last week, you can uh, get with somebody else that was here. Uh, it was uh, I thought we had a great uh, in, in time of discussion last week when we talked about patience. Um, and uh, so um, tonight we'll move into kindness, and then we'll, of course we'll pick up gentleness, which is uh, not necessarily next in line, but it, they work together. So Ephesians 4 gives us a, a little bit of an understanding of where we're going. Ephesians 4, verses 31 and 32 it says, get rid of all bitterness and rage and anger and harsh words and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Now look at what it says. Instead, which means replace it with, be kind to one another, to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Kindness is an outward growing fruit. Okay, uh, the, the first several that we talked about, which was love and joy and peace, uh, all worked with our relationship uh, with the Father, okay? Love, joy, and peace, and you get patience, kindness, and of course we're talking about uh, gentleness tonight too. These are outward growing. These are things that affect people. The, I know the first ones do, but it's kind of an outward growing fruit, a fruit that people can experience on the outside. It, it roots from a Greek word referring to the kindness that permeates and penetrates the whole nature of the body. Now, I need you to think about that just for a minute, okay? Permeate, y'all know what permeate is, right? Right? To fill, to penetrate, okay? Permeate and penetrate the whole body. So what does that mean? What does that mean? When you hear the word that something ought to permeate and penetrate, what does that mean? Be filled with it, okay? Right? What else? Okay, all right, to become part of who you are and how you behave. What else? Permeate and penetrate. What do you think? When you hear those words, what do you think about? Okay, automatic response. Okay, that's very good. Anybody else? Permeate and penetrate. What sticks out to you? What do you think of when you hear those words? Complete. Okay, all right, absolutely. If you permeate something or penetrate something, it is to fill it, right? Uh, and which is exactly what we're talking about. It's it's an outward growing. It, it is a uh, it is something that should to completely fill the whole nature of your body. So think about that just for a second. If something is going to fill your whole nature of your body, what does that mean? Okay, great. It push out everything else, right? The things that aren't supposed to be there. What are some of the things that aren't supposed to be there? Ephesians the the uh, four thirty one gives us some of those things, right? It's bitterness, right? It's rage. It's anger. It's harsh words. It's slander, uh, and, as well as other types of evil behavior. So all those things that we harbor, all those things that we have the ability to uh, to, to house within ourselves, uh, are things that are that. Uh, kindness replaces. So, what of those, well, let me back up. All of those that we just talked about, the, the bitterness and rage and anger, the harsh words and the slander, all of those are attributes of what? The world, okay. What else? The flesh, right? The natural man, the, who we are prior to Christ. Um, and uh, so, the, all of those are attributes of a self-centered individual and those things those self-centered centered attributes are changed when self is exchanged for Jesus and the Holy Spirit right we've seen that you've probably seen that in your own life uh, experience that in your own life so what effects can kindness have in a stressful situation what effects can kindness have in a stressful situation It can calm things down. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Kind words turn away wrath. Absolutely. Somebody else. How can kindness affect things in a stressful situation? 
It relieves the stress, okay? All right. Anybody else? Kind words in a stressful situation? Okay. All right. It does. It does. It, it leaves a seed planted. It makes an effect on who? Do what? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it plants a seed not only within us because we recognize what? If we're the one that's being kind to someone else that is being mean or ugly or hateful or whatever the case may be, then maybe they're just irate with us about something and we use kindness to combat that with, not only does it plant a seed in them, but it also does what in us? Okay, all right. So it helps us to see that what? It works, <laughs> right? We hear this stuff, we read this stuff, we, we talk about this stuff in, in Scripture, and then we use it and it works. It's kind of that, hey, wow, that does actually really work. Miss Carol? Um, I think it goes along with the Scripture. Do you remember when it was like Helen Keller or Oprah? She said, you can accomplish by kindness what you cannot by force. Yes, absolutely. That, that is words of wisdom. You can accomplish by kindness what word uh, but what you cannot by force i think is exactly what she said yeah absolutely things can change drastically in a situation you've heard me and you've heard other pastors talk about there's two types of people in the church there's people that tote buckets of water and people that tote buckets of gas okay all right and so when something begins to take place in a church you're either going to have people that show up with buckets of water and they're going to put it out using what? Kindness, right? Or you're going to have people show up with buckets of gas and they're going to do what? Watch it explode, right? They're going to add more fuel to the fire. They're going to cause it to rage even more. And so, yeah, so, so a, a kindness has a huge impact on stressful situations. Kindness is an active expression of love. We talked about that, about love, which was the very first one we talked about. Kindness is an expression of that. You cannot have kindness without having love. You've got to have love in order to have kindness. Uh, kindness is a quality that causes us to do little things for others. So think about that just for a second. Kindness is a quality that causes us to do little things for others. The little things that may seem unnecessary by others that are watching, okay? So when you think about that, when you think about kindness being where things are done that are not, now little things that are done that are not necessarily necessary, uh, what are some of those little things that Christ-centered people do for others? What are some little things that Christ-centered people do for others that may seem little and unnecessary to the world. Miss Carol? Okay. Okay. Something small, something that, that was really for the world to see was really unnecessary, but we did it and it made an impact. It was a little thing, right? Somebody else. Little things that Christ centered people do. I'm sorry? Smile. Okay. Okay, all right, what else? Listening, being a good listener, okay? All right, what else? What, what is something that Christ-centered people do that is a little thing? Okay. Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. What else? Think about something. Think about it. I, I, great answers. Think about something specifically that Christ-centered people do that the world would think is unnecessary. Okay? I know you're having to, I hear some gears grinding. I understand. All right? Okay. Okay. All right. Send a phone call, send a card or a phone call. Yeah, people that, that come to church or people that maybe are missing, somebody's sick, you send them, a, send them a card, word of encouragement. What else? Things that Christ-centered people do that, are, that doesn't seem necessary to the world. Yeah, prayer between one another. Absolutely. What else? Ma'am?
किया It hasn't been that many years ago. There was a uh, a social group that was boycotting or picketing a church, and uh, the church people knew that it was coming. They kind of let them know they were going to be there to boycott them. It was a city church, and so they showed up early and they cooked breakfast, and they got out tables of water. And when the picketers showed up, they went outside and they offered them breakfast and food and took them water during the day, and it blew their minds. Could not understand. Okay? Little things that Christ-centered people do that the world don't understand, right? Why in the world? You got people coming to boycott your church, things that you're doing, things that you stand for, right? And so instead of being mad at them, casting hate at them, they show up early and fix breakfast, right? Feed them. Open their doors. Give them restrooms to go to. (laughs) Give them water during the day. Things that the rest of the world just thinks is absolutely bonkers, right? What else? Okay, that gives you a little hint. What else? Christ-centered things that Christ-centered people do that the world don't understand. Just little things, ma'am. Be kind, okay? <laughs> All right. What else? <laughs> Yours is. <laughs> Yeah, understand, understand. Uh, Apologizing when the world seems nothing wrong with what you're doing, right? Something that you're doing, maybe it was the way you responded to somebody, and yet it was perfectly okay with the rest of the world. They thought it was, matter of fact, they actually thought it was kind of a mild response. But in your spirit, you knew it was wrong. And so you went back and did what? Apologized. It was a little thing that the world thought was unnecessary, but it was a kindness, right? It was a place of kindness that you've shown. Miss Carrie, are your brain working now? Uh, it, it, the wheels are slower than I was. <laughs> um, I had an incident one time. Um, somebody was going to do something, and I, I said something about it. And, of course, right away I had to run back and tell on you. And the person that was involved came in just, like, ready to explode. Absolutely, absolutely. Go ahead.
Try to gather yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the difference in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Allie, several years, it was back when she was a good bit younger. Uh, we had made, when we were leading Jam City at Hopewell, which was a children's ministry there, we'd made the, uh, the little salvation bracelets. Y'all seen them? It's got the red and the black and the blue and the green and, the, you know, all those things on it. And so she made a couple extra ones. We went out and ate that day. And she gave it to a girl that was working at um, Larry's. You know where this is going. You know, I'm not going to tell the name, okay, so you don't have to spill it out. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, we gave it to that young lady. It's been years, okay? Gave it to her, and Allie shared it with her and gave it to her, and we prayed for her that day. Y'all, she's never forgot that. Never forgot that. It made a huge impact. Every time I go in there and eat, matter of fact, I ate in there about three or four weeks ago, and she brought it up again. She said... Yeah, and she told you about what happened. Yeah, little random acts of kindness like that, things that people do not understand uh, is a great, great thing, okay? So how have you seen kindness develop in your life? Now remember, kindness is a fruit of the Spirit, okay? This is not something you can do on your own. This is not talking about you being nice in situations where it's easy to be nice in. We're talking about kindness here, okay? We're talking about something that the Holy Spirit produces in your life as a fruit of being having a Christ-like character, okay? We good? Okay. Now, how have you seen kindness grow uh, or develop in your life as a follower of Christ? Okay. All right. Can you give me a little bit more on that? Okay. Okay. All right. Just continue to do things. Somebody else. How have you seen your walk with Christ as you've grown? You have seen kindness become more evident in your life. Sir? Okay. All right. You've seen as you've grown in your relationship, you've become more kind. Basically, you're not as anger, easily angered as you once were. Okay. All right. Yeah, kindness is a replacement for anger, remember? Somebody else? More patient. Who said that one? Yeah, we talked about that one last week for all those of you that missed it. Man, I sure hate you missed that one, Kenneth. Anyway. Harry can fill you in on that one. He'll, he'll change the way you're thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, more patient, okay? More kind. Somebody else, have you seen kindness grow, be driven, okay, developed in your life as the Holy Spirit, as you've grown spiritually in your walk with Christ? Have you seen your kindness change? Okay. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So let me ask you this. What effect on our churches would it have if Christians showed kindness to each other? What effect on our churches would it have if Christians showed kindness to each other? <laughs> not trying to trap you. I'm just wanting you to think.
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Somebody else. What effect on our churches would it have if we showed kindness to one another? It should. It absolutely should. Absolutely. Somebody else. What? There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's some more in here that would agree with you. Yeah, you do. You do. So if we, I'm going to have to be careful here. Like Clay said, it's a trap. Um, I was going to make a comment or a conclusion to that. The, uh, in the picture of our uh, small, loving, uh, kind church that we have, we Kindness, kindness can greatly uh, change uh, our churches, uh, greatly change our churches. Um, if we really, and I, when I say we, I'm talking about the, Christ, the American Christian church, okay? I'm not necessarily talking about Zion Hill. Uh, if we as ch- a church, as the church of God, okay, um, if we were we represented Christ in a kind manner to each other, we'd have about a tenth of the churches that we have. Because how do, how, do churches, how do new churches take place, typically? Okay. Yeah. You go back to that flesh, remember? Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, and slander be put away from you, along with all the malice. What is all those things? Flesh, Right? And that we tend to, that, that tends to stick out, doesn't it? Especially when something doesn't go our way. And we, we have an opportunity as followers of Christ at any moment, in any disagreement, in any place uh, within the church. And when I say that, I'm talking about within the church families, okay? 
to choose whether or not we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us in kindness towards someone that has a differing opinion towards us, or we can choose flesh, which happens more than we want to talk about. Um, and so kindness is a huge deal, and it affects our churches greatly. And a little bit to what Ms. Carol was talking about, uh, it greatly affects the outside world. Because if they see us loving each other the way that Jesus said we ought to, showing kindness because of our growth spiritually and the Holy Spirit producing that, they're going to see a different love. They're going to see a different group of people. They're going to recognize and we're going to stick out in this world like sore thumbs. And you know what? That may not necessarily make them hit the back door, but they're going to think of you when something takes place. When they're looking for someone to say something kind or be kind to them about something that's going on in their life. And so kindness is a huge deal, followed up by gentleness. They're kind of one in the same. They're, they're very much, um, uh, they're very much uh, kind of the, somewhat the same. They're both love enduring. They're both love, what I, what I like to call love and work clothes, okay? Walking out. Uh, living out, being out, going to work, so to speak. Gentleness is the same thing. Uh, gentleness is also controlled strength, okay? That was one of the definitions that I'd read in a book. It's controlled strength. Just because you can don't mean you should, right? Um, and so gentleness is controlled strength. It's something that washes away everything that is harsh. Uh, and gentleness is a word that um, Jesus Christ used to describe himself. Um, in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am what? Gentle and humble in heart, right? I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus himself said, this is who I am. But this is the same Jesus, remember? Same Jesus that could be so harsh with the Pharisees, couldn't he? He could be. He could be very upfront, very in their face, very much. This is exactly who you are. He's also the same Jesus that walked into the temple, if you remember correctly. They were abusing what his father had set up. And so he did what? He drove them all out, right? Turned over tables, had a small fit um, up in there. And so we see in his great power, yet he's still gentle enough that the kids want to come and sit in his lap. Beautiful picture of gentleness, how to be gentle, right? Um, gentleness is only mentioned, if you look in the New American Standard Bible, it's only mentioned 11 times in all of Scripture. Three of those 11 times is describing uh, the gentleness of God, which is in Psalms 1835. Um, uh, Paul, uh, Paul <laughs> David writes, You have also given me the shield of your salvation, and your right hand upholds me, and your gentleness makes me Great. Talking about the gentleness of God. Uh, Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 10, 1. Now I, Paul, myself, urge you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. So who's he talking about? The gentleness of Christ, right? And then you got in Galatians 5, 23, talking about gentleness and self-control. We're talking about the gentleness of who? The Holy Spirit, okay? So you get the Trinity there in three of the 11 places. Talking about the gentleness of each one of the different trinities. Uh, Charles Allen, he had a great quote here. And uh, this is going to kind of stick with some of you. Charles Allen had a quote. It says, it's one. Now, he's kind of an older guy, so you're going to understand the, the language here. It's one's disdain for sin. One can be harsh and unkind toward a sinner. Some people seem to have such a passion for righteousness that they have no room left for compassion for those who have failed. Think about that, okay? Think about that. That's what he's talking about. In one's disdain for sin, one can be harsh and unkind toward a sinner. Some people seem to have such a passion for righteousness, they have no room left for compassion for those who have failed. It's very, very easy, and we all can say yes, to have patience and kindness and gentleness with people, both of the church and not of the church that continuously walk into places of sin, right? We've had 
probably everybody in this room has got somebody in their life that you're fed up with them, okay? All right? You've been encouraging and praying for them and, and trying to get them to understand uh, that, that God has a great, great plan for their life. They just need to line themselves up with Him and uh, come and give their life to Him, swap out their life for His, and they continue to go back to the sin. You continue to try to help them. They continue to fall back in. And what typically happens? Right? Yeah. We, lo we lose our compassion. We lose our gentleness, right? We lose our ability to be kind and to be, uh, to be considerate in that thing. So what does that say? What does that say about Christians that are impatient with both the lost and the saved over their poor choices? Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. When I first started reading and studying years and years ago, I was in church. I could understand why they were trying to get me. Did every day for me for three years, four days for me. That's what I could find. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Kenny. Yes. Now, this is being recorded, so don't reveal anything that you don't want heard and said by everybody else, okay? So I'm just, go ahead. Yeah, a hard heart will bring root to a whole bunch of things, especially those three that you brought up. Absolutely, absolutely. What else? What does that say about Christians? What does that say about Christians that are impatient with people that are sinners, both in and out of the church? Okay. It is. It is. Yeah, you know, we have to continuously, probably the best way I can, and you've heard me put it in a lot of the pastors, and you've, uh, the best way to look at everyone is at the foot of the cross. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what they've done. It doesn't matter what they said. It doesn't matter if they claim to be a follower of Christ, if they claim to be one of hell's angels, okay? All of us are completely equal at the foot of the cross okay and that will help us to know how to be gentle with those that that uh, even even as christians and those that are that seem to be making so many poor choices paul encouraged timothy to be gentle in second timothy 2 at verse 24 through 26 he said the lord's bond servant must not be quarrelsome but be kind uh, to all able to teach Patient when wronged, well, we can all take a lesson from this, with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition. If perhaps God may grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. So what did he say? Don't be quarrelsome, be kind to all, able to teach, and the one that we, I may struggle with, patient when wronged. And with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition. Okay? So, 
real quick, we don't have much time yet. How does gentleness play a role in us sharing the gospel with people in our family? They sometimes seem the hardest to reach, okay? How does gentleness, and the reason I use that one is because I know that probably everybody in here has got somebody in your family you've continuously prayed for and tried to reach for the kingdom, and it just seems like you're beating your head on the wall, right? Sometimes it seems like the more you pray and the more you seek, the further the harder they run. So how does gentleness play a role in us sharing the gospel with our friends and family members? Ron? Showing them that they matter. Okay. Okay. You do. You do. Absolutely. Yeah, if we can't show gentleness and kindness to those that we're witnessing to, there's no way they're going to come. There's no way they're going to come. Clay? Absolutely, and, and kindness and gentleness goes a long way. It goes a tremendous long way uh, with people that we're trying to reach. Uh, think about your one, okay? Those of you that are praying for your one, that are looking, uh, looking forward to, to seeing your one come to Christ, being gentle with them, being kind to them. Um, even every time, um, you know, it seems like we take two steps forward and, and three steps back. Uh, just when I feel like that I'm getting some headway, I shouldn't say I, but I just feel like when I see some headway making, some, some headway happening, it's almost like everything derails. And, um, you know, it, it, it makes you want to just beat your head on the wall. Um, but I encourage you don't give up, to, to continue to be gentle, continue to remember that's what Jesus said, okay? That's one of his great characteristics is him being gentle. Remember it is controlled, um, it is controlled strength. And so um, I encourage you to allow uh, the Holy Spirit as you abide in Christ, okay? You cannot produce kindness and gentleness, uh, especially on a consistent basis. Only the Holy Spirit can do that in you. 
Um, you know, is kindness only geared up to where only the Holy Spirit? No, because there's people that are be, being kind and they don't, they, they don't have anything to do with God. They don't even believe God exists and they have acts of kindness, okay? But being kind and gentle on a consistent basis requires something other than the flesh. You can't do it. I don't care what your personality is. You cannot do it on a consistent basis. Only Christ can do that through you produced by the Holy Spirit. All of this that we're talking about is rooted in the Holy Spirit, staying abiding in Christ, spending time with Him, and not necessarily, not only you abiding in Him, but He abiding in you. And uh, so may we, may we continue to allow that to take place in our lives. Okay, anything else before we go? All right, I want to ask a couple of you guys. Um, uh, this is what I'm going to ask you to do, okay? I'm going to give you a paper. And this is what it says, 50 acts, random acts of kindness, okay? There's 50 suggestions on here for acts of kindness. I would encourage you, you don't have to do one a week or nothing like that, but I'd encourage you to pick some out and do some of them. And um, uh, we'll, uh, it, it maybe will give you uh, a little bit of an uh, encouragement uh, or an opportunity. Maybe you're kind of one of these people, you're like, man, I, I'm a kind person, you know, and uh, I want to do something kind, I just don't know what to do. And uh, maybe this will give you some ideas about how to do some things uh, that are kind, uh, that can show other people, uh, that uh, give you an opportunity to show them your love for Christ and uh, his love for them. Okay? Anything else? Do we have enough? Everybody's got one? Okay. Okay.